a distinction in Burgess Meredith and I of doing the most. We did four each. No one did more than we did. And it was after the Velvet Alley, of course, but I was doing right. Gypsy. And uh, Rod called me personally and he said, I just wrote a nice half hour script I'd like you to do. I said, What are you talking about? I'm in a play, Rod. I can't do it. He said, Well, you have a vacation in January for two weeks. This is only take a week. Come on out and have a vacation out here. <clears throat> well, anything Rod says, I said, What's it nice? He said, Well, it's a trumpet player. So I said, Okay. We could wait. I asked my wife, she said, fine, we'll go out. So I then worked with a trumpet player in the orchestra, Gypsy, who taught me how to finger and do all the thing. Gave me an old battered, I bought an old battered trum trumpet. And, I, and it was a wonderful experience. Of course, working with Rod was always a wonderful experience. Every word was important. I mean, you didn't change words as you did in other shows when you worked for Rod or worked for Reggie Rose. So uh, that was it. So each year, I did another one, and they were all one. I didn't like the owl one, but the other three I liked. I liked the pool, it's my favorite. But it's just a wonderful show, it's because he's written such good words. Well, first, he always has power, mm -hmm. no matter what he's talking about. And also, he's, he love to roll his words around in your mouth. There are some playwrights, uh, for me, all Clifford Odets, I love to roll. They belong in my mouth. I just, they're comfortable. And uh, now Neil Simon, Herb Gardner, they're good for me. I like their words. They're rich, and their thoughts are rich, and there's always something underneath. It's never just what he's talking about. It's always another dimension. And that's what, you know, in a half hour show, you don't usually get it. You look at that game of pool. It's got so much to say. And then we did the one I don't like, which is the airship, which keeps going around, which we do in life all the time, without ever, it ever ending. You know, he, he always had something to say. He was a handsome man. Short. And I think aware of his shortness. Always had a tan. Always had he wrote at the pool. Whoever wrote it, they didn't type he into a dictaphone. phone. <clears throat> he was always smiling. Very serious about the way. Well, we didn't. I'll give you an example. When we did uh, the Velvet Alley, the Playhouse 90, Art Carney and I had a scene. I played an agent. He was a writer, never had success. Now he put his first show on television. And the next morning, we're reading the reviews in a hotel room, and we're in, I'm in my shorts. And we're laughing at the reviews. And then during rehearsals, about four or five days in the rehearsal, we, the laughter and the joy of these reviews catches up with us, and we cannot say the words. So Frank Schaffner was directing, he said, geez, I love that. But I don't know how Rod feels about the words. So he called Rod and he said, Rod, he explained to him. And I said, no, no, those words are very, very important because they set up there. He said, let me come down and see it. And he really wanted those words in. And he came down and he watched us go through it. And we go in this hysteric. And the joy of the success and the camaraderie, because I later die because he turns up, all of that, he said, I don't care if I don't understand one word. The emotion that's coming out of that scene is beautiful, and it's what counts. There's a guy willing to sacrifice, I mean, two, three pages of dialogue because he liked what was happening. That's the kind of guy he was.